before you today in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift you up this morning, God, for you are good and you are great, God. Your mercy endureth forever, Lord. Father, we ask that your presence will be made known in this place. We ask that your presence will be made known in homes today, God. Father, would you show up, Lord God? Would you just pour out your love this morning, God, as we pour out our love to you in worship, in song, in praise, in lifting of our hands, oh God, in the clapping of our hands, oh God. Father, we bless you this day, oh God. We worship you this day, oh God. You deserve all the praise and you deserve all the glory. Hallelujah. Come on and worship his name. Hallelujah.
you, oh God, that you would take our life as a sacrifice Amen. unto you, oh God. Father, that we can offer it up and know, oh God, that you know exactly the right temperature, oh God. That you know what the setting yes. should be, oh God. Oh God, yes. that the fire will not overcome us, oh God. The fire will not even burn us, oh God.
And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He gave. He's our ultimate example. Amen. In Ephesians 5, 1 through 2, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice for a sweet, to, for a sweet smelling aroma. We are to be imitators of Christ, amen? And as we imitate him, he, when he gave, he gave the most extravagant gift he could ever give, amen? His only begotten son. And so when we give, when we give our tithes and we give our offerings, we're, do, we're showing, we're imitating him and showing our love for him. Amen? It's an honor that we get to do this. Um, if you're watching from home, um, you can text to give at um, 600 um, Just text give to that number. Um, we're also going to have a time where you can come up here and um, present your tithes and your offerings. Amen? So if you have it here with you or you're at home, we're just going to pray over it and bless it. So hold it up. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for the seed that you have placed in the sower's hand, oh, Father God. We pray that you would multiply it, Father God. We thank you for sending and giving us your only son. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus was the ultimate gift, and you are the ultimate giver. So, Father God, as we give our tithes and as we give our offering and we show our love to you, Father God, we are imitating you, oh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that it would be blessed and that it would go out to advance your kingdom here on this earth. In Jesus' name. Name. Amen. So if you're here and you would like to come up and place your tithes and offering in this bucket, again, if you're watching from home or online, you can text GIVE to 600 Amen. You guys know what time it is? Yeah. Confession of faith. Amen. Come on, let's stand up for our confession of faith. Let us proclaim it. Let us do it boldly. There's a certain part in our confession of faith where it says uh, we are disciples, we are making disciples, and we are being disciples. So let us have that question in our head as we leave today. Like, are we are we being discipled and are we making disciples? So, I, amen. Let us, let us do our confession of faith. And I count of three. One, two... Three. Right now, church is my church. I love my church, and my church loves me. Here we believe in the power of the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Here we believe in the power of the Son and the Holy Ghost. I'm excited to see that people are standing in line to get to this church to hear the word of God. Every seat is filled in every service. We pack out the house and are ready for expansion. It is natural for us to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Many who come into this house are saved and transformed for the glory of God. Every member of this church functions in their place of ministry. It is being discipled and is making disciples. For that reason, every member of this church is blessed, healthy, and prosperous. I declare today that this is the season of grace for us. The doors of success have been opened. And we shall succeed in everything in Christ. The door of the air has been closed, and we shall not know defeat. This is the season of grace for us. The doors of success have been opened, and we shall succeed in everything in Christ. The door of the air has been closed, and we shall not know defeat. This is the season of grace for us. The doors of success have been opened, and we shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed, and we shall not. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Are you guys enjoying the beautiful weather that we've been having? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Um, it's not too often that I get to come up here and share the word of the Lord, but it is a privilege and it is an honor. And so I ask for you to buckle your seatbelts, to, to hear oh, the word of the Lord that is going to come forward today, knowing that it is not me. I am not a fan of the microphone by any means, but um, when the Lord gives you a word, you have to be obedient. Amen? Amen. And so here I am today. Um, I also want to say hello to our church family and our friends online. Um, let us know that you're on there with us. And um, God has given me such a revelation that I want to encourage you guys to stay on until the very end. Uh, God began to give me this word uh, in the beginning stages of the quarantine. And um, now that we're beginning to phase out, this word still very much applies. And so before I go ahead and get started, let's just, let's just pray. Hallelujah, Father God. I just thank you for the word, oh God. For your word is true, oh God. And your word is right, oh Father God. And your word is active and alive, oh Father God. In every season, oh God. Your word was alive then, it's alive now, and it will be alive forevermore, Father God. So I just pray right now that you begin to open our ears, oh God. That you begin to open our minds, oh God. That you open our hearts to receive what it is that you are saying to us in this very seasonal, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you would put a cold to my mouth, oh God, that you would purify it, that I might be a, my, a mouthpiece for you, Father God. And I pray that every word that falls on these ears, oh God, would cause an activation, a motivation, oh God, and a determination in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, so, Again, he began to give me this word weeks ago, if not months ago. And as I sat in this empty building, this building represents the people of God that gather here, who, who are followers and ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We collectively, along with other church congrega congregations that assemble, are a representation of the bride of Christ. This building does not have the ability to limit the church body or the people of God. Yeah. I've seen a lot of things on, you know, on social media that uh, the church is without walls. The church has finally uh, come out of the building. But we were never stuck in the building. We were never limited by the building. We are the church. Each one of us that sit here today, God has called to be the church. Amen. So if you're believing that this building has limited you in some type of way or your church building has limited you in some type of way, it's a lie and you're in bondage and you need to be set free because no building can limit you right. from the call of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. God is speaking. The fact that he is speaking to many of us uh We've been far too busy to stop, to listen. God is not one that he shouts, that he tries to get your attention, but he whispers. How many times do we just need to be quiet during our prayer time and listen for that whisper? He comes to us like a father would come to a child. When does God yell? I mean, when does a father yell? When we're not listening, right? Yeah. But God doesn't necessarily yell. He'll, he'll change the circumstances and make you and put you in a position to listen, yeah. okay? So here we are in the quarantine, and, and God is a gentleman. He has waited patiently for his bride to position herself so she can do uh, what he's called her to do, and that is to find the hidden things in the secret place. Yes. As I was praying, the Lord began to reveal to me the church has been a Martha church. We have our calendars full of events and meetings, and we have several areas of ministry that are managing their own calendars and their own events. And we've got a mission statement, and we've got visions, and we got cal calendars, and believe God for the budget. So we make all of our plans. We do everything in the name of the Lord, and it's good. It's good, but how many of you know good is not always God? 
Right. And good is not always great, right? So we need to kind of check ourselves because we have become professional Marthas. I mean Christians. Don't get me wrong. I love planning, giving, serving in all of these areas. I, it feels amazing to look at the calendar and see everything that we've done for the Lord, especially when we do a clip of a review at the end of the year of how we bless people and how we went into the community and people have, who have come into the church and grown and flourished. It's a blessing to see that. But in this season, God is stripping all of that away. He has wiped our calendars clean. And we have resisted it, right? We're determined to get back to normal. Um, but if you turn with me to Luke 10, 38, 42. Again, that's Luke 10, 38, 42. It says, Martha was distracted with what? Serving. While Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word, Martha approached Jesus saying, Lord, you don't care that my sister left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. First of all, the audacity to tell the Messiah what to do, right? Yeah. Secondly, that's how Martha's do, and that's how they think. I'm doing all this stuff, and no one's helping me. They need to help me, right? And so his response was, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which is not to be taken from her. So when you're doing the, the, the good part, when you're doing what God has called you to do, you can know that he's going to, keep you there. He's, he's going to keep you there, right? But this is what he goes on to say. Let's be honest. All of us have been there. We've all been at a place where we've been busy serving, thinking we're doing you know, everything for God. But there's a time where we have to stay still and sit at his feet and see what it is that he's saying um, so that we can continue to pour out and do what he's called us to do. But let us evaluate. Is it possible that we've become a Martha church? Um, Peter was a professional fisherman. They fished all night and caught not one fish. Do we know this story? And so this was his livelihood. He knew what he was doing. He had done it many times before. But this time, they had caught absolutely nothing, right? Jesus came and told them to throw their nets on the right side of the boat in the morning. They did what he said at that point, not knowing that he was Jesus. Their nets were so full, they were not able to draw it all in. They had to call others. Go get your boats and help us get this uh, uh, catch, right? And so they went out and their nets were bursting at the seams. They barely could pull it all in. How many of you know, when there's a little bit, sometimes we, we don't want to share, you know, because there's only a little bit. But when there's a lot, you, ha you have no choice but to ask for help, right? And so this um, Martha mentality of I'm doing this and they're not, or they're doing this and we're not, this whole comparison thing is going to come to an end within the body of Christ because the catch is going to be so big, we're all going to have to join together to get the great catch, amen? There's going to be enough for you, there's going to be enough for me, and even then some. Again, we have become professionals, and we are stuck in our thinking and our methods of what's right and what's good. And yes, the government has released a stay-at-home order, but God is in the midst of this, and he is saying, peace, be still, and know that I am God. There is something greater on the other side of this. God is not silent. He is speaking to his church. But we must stop resisting and sit at his feet as Mary did. We have to be willing to do things different than we've done them before to catch 
be ready to catch that great catch, right? Uh, many will compare this season to the wilderness. And so here's where we get, we're going to start getting a little technical. And I'm going to need you guys to really listen out for key words here because it's all going to come together in the end, okay? I'm going to bring up some Hebrew. I'm going to bring up some Greek. And um, so bear with me. But um, we would consider this a wilderness experience. In the natural, it's dreadful, right? We have to stay in our homes. We have to stay away from our loved ones. Many are working at home. They've lost, if not lost, their jobs altogether. Families have never spent so much time together like never, right? We haven't even spent that much time with ourselves. And some of us don't even like what we see. We were talking about that the other night. Um, but it is an adjustment to say the least. But in this season, God is meeting us where we are in our homes. He is protecting. He is providing. He is preparing as he did so in the Bible. And we must position ourselves to hear and trust his voice. And I think some people can say, I'm at home doing nothing. But you could be at home still doing a lot of something and still not hearing the whisper of God. I see a lot of people busy doing nothing at home, and they're still not hearing the whisper of God. Okay? So, I'm just saying, the wilderness is mentioned almost 300 times in the Bible and was referred to as a time of God's test and trial. For several of our forefathers experienced the wilderness such as Abraham, Jacob, David, Moses, the Israelites, Elijah, John the Baptist, and even Jesus. There is purpose in your wilderness. In Hebrews, wilderness, I'm sorry, in Hebrew, wilderness is midbar. The Hebrew word midbar. The root word for midbar has a meaning of speak or word. God speaks to us in the wilderness. He humbles us and proves us in the wilderness. The wilderness can last days. It can last weeks. It can last months. It can last years. It depends how quickly we learn our lesson. Come on. Amen. Anybody been there? I'm not talking about the quarantine or stay at home. I'm talking about weeks and months and years of of just learning the lesson. You know, um, the Israelites' trip was only an 11-day trip, but they ended up taking 40 years. 40 years. And God was still good to them at the end of those 40 years. Amen? Amen. And so when I discovered the root word, midbar, or wilderness meant speak or word, I was elated. And here is why. I recently was studying the Passover, and I read that right now, 2020 is the year 5780 on the Jewish Hebrew calendar. Okay? As some of you know, Hebrew words have layers, and they have associations, and they have some symbolism. Okay? So this is where I need you to to kind of bear with me here. The number 80, 5780, correlates as the letter pay. Symbolically, pay also means mouth or word. Okay? So we have wilderness that means speak, and now we're in the year that means mouth or word. Okay? This is so incredible and so God that's exactly why it doesn't stop there. He's so deep. So when I look at one Hebrew word, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And he's blowing my mind. And I'm like, Lord, help me to convey this to everyone. There is an amazing mystery hidden within the letter pay that also is believed to be um, two letters, kaf and yad. With not going too deep, it paints a picture of a divine spark of God, which is Yad. 
And then within our soul, a place of the body where potential is, is actualized, which is ka. So if you can imagine this, the word pe, which means speak, mouth, wilderness, has two underlining words, which means divine spark, okay? And so the symbol of the letter looks like a mouth with a spark of fire of revival, okay? This is where we're at. We're in the wilderness. We're in 2020, and God is saying, I want you to be a mouthpiece. I want you to speak, right? When God spoke and let the, said, let there be light, there was light. As you release sparks of revelation that God reveals, he will be faithful to rescue and restore the lost. So pay attention to your words. For they align with what God is saying. God is calling us to decree a thing and watch it come to pass. How many years have we prayed? How many years have we declared? How many years have we decreed and we've waited to see it be manifested? But God is saying this is the year of mighty decree. This is the year of mighty increase. This is the year that when you speak a thing that you will be able to see it manifested and come to pass. Don't forsake your wilderness. Don't forsake your wilderness. There are going to be rapid results, rapid answers, and a harvest on its way. Amen. Yeah. God, God will send you and test you in the wilderness, but you will also be tempted in your wilderness. Okay? God is testing you in the wilderness, but the enemy will, will tempt you. I think I said that backwards. God will test you, but the enemy will tempt you. Somebody might be saying, what's the difference? God is for you. He is growing you. He's stretching you. He's building your character, right? But the enemy, he wants to destroy you. So he'll bring chaos into your life to ruin your witness, okay? So we have to know the difference. Yes. We have to know the difference. Amen. So Satan tempted even Jesus in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And he won't hesitate to tempt you, Amen. okay? Let's turn to Isaiah 40. Three through five. This was during a season when Jerusalem was reaping double for their sin. We're believing double portion in a positive way, the double blessing, right? But Jerusalem was reaping double consequence for their sins in this particular season. Verse 3 says, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall exalt, be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together what are we we're in this together right that's the saying that we've been saying a lot we're in this together for the mouth of the lord has spoken Hallelujah. come on somebody if you don't know what the scripture is saying it's saying those that are high and lofty are going to be brought low and those that have been humble and meek and in their prayer closets are going to be the ones that are going to be the mouthpiece for the lord yeah. come on somebody the one who's crying out and making the crooked way straight yeah. that's the one he's going to use okay yeah. so let's Let's really see what's happening here. If we go into Matthew 3, everybody turn to Matthew 3, because I'm a, this is a confirmation of what happened in Isaiah 40. It confirms that John the Baptist was in the wilderness. He was the voice crying out to prepare the way of the Lord, making his way straight. John was set apart for his purpose. Some may have considered him a little peculiar, right? John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt. Back then, leather belts were not in style. But, you know, and, and then his diet was locusts and, and wild honey, okay? That's not uh, something that someone, like, craves and wants to run out to the store and go eat. He separated himself for the purpose of the calling, yeah. okay? He separated himself because... 
Um, well, let me just go into He preached the unpopular message of repentance and warned the kingdom of God is at hand. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, all Judea and all regions around Jordan went out to him. Where did they go to meet him? In the wilderness. That's right. They went into the wilderness to get baptized. Okay? I say that to say uh, if he looked like them and he acted like them, would they have taken him seriously? They were being punished or reaping the consequences for their sin. And he, he was in the wilderness. He didn't look like them. He didn't dress like them. He didn't even eat like them. Okay, so if he was like them, they probably would not have taken him seriously. They wanted what he had to offer. Amen. They wanted what he had to offer. He had something to offer that none of them had, right? Mm -hmm. Church, it's time to level up. It's time to level up. Wherever you think you are, trust me, there's deeper. However high or wherever you come from, there, there's further. Yeah. Where, what, it's deeper, higher. Yeah. There's no limit to where God wants to take you. But we have to come to that place where we will get into that secret place and get away with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because right now church, it, well, it's kind of hidden and it's on a back road, right? And we do things slightly different than other churches. And But don't worry. Don't worry about that because they will come. Because we will continue to do what is true to what God has called us to do. Amen. We don't need to look like anybody else. We don't need to sound like anybody else. Because God has given us our very own sound. Amen. Yeah. Um, we have a sound that no one else can have. Or amen. Because he's given it directly to us. And so if you'll go with me to Matthew 4 now. There we find Jesus. Hallelujah. I just love my Jesus. Amen. There's a saying, can't nobody do me like Jesus. That's how I feel. Every time I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me. Think about all, of, all Jesus has done for you. Where he's taking you from. Where he saved you from. Doors he's closed to thank God you shouldn't have gone through, right? And even when you force them open and after you realize you shouldn't have opened them in the first place, what did he do? You know, he took you with open arms and set you on, on, on a solid ground, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so there we find Jesus in Matthew 4. And he was led by the Spirit where? To the wilderness. And not only was he led to the wilderness, he was led to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Why in the world would the Spirit of the living God lead Jesus to the wilderness in a place of temptation? Right? Why would you send me there, Lord? It says, after Jesus obeyed, went into the wilderness and fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after he was hungry, the tempter came. So, the tempter came after, you know, he got weak. Right? We see the tempter, Satan, tempted Jesus three times. This is key. You might have to go back and read it. Ask God what God is speaking to you in regards to this. But first, in the wilderness, Satan tempted Jesus. What did he tempt? He tempted his flesh. He tempted his emotions. He wanted to give him bread when he was hungry. Okay? That's first level temptation. Come on. If you're being tempted by your flesh, with your emotions, your satisfaction, that's called lust of the body. First level temptation. Oh, but it gets deeper. Second, at the pinnacle of the temple, Satan tempts Jesus' identity. He messes with his mind and says, surely if you are who you say you are, your father will save you. Right? So he messes with his identity. And that's called the pride of life. The pride of life. Because we want to be who we say, you know, we are. And we want God to 
course we trust God to save us in the case that we were to do anything, but do we really have to prove it? Or is he just who he says he is, right? Third, it gets even deeper. So the enemy's meeting him in the wilderness. Now he takes him to the pinnacle of the temple. And now they go exceedingly high mountain, right? Satan tempts Jesus' authority and dominion. His control to worship. This is kind of like a two-part one, okay? Because this is the lust of the eyes, vision, future. We get our authority from the one we worship. This is why it's a two-part. Our authority, our dominion on the earth comes from the one we worship, okay? Um, the Bible says we can't serve two masters. If you're not worshiping God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then you are worshiping a false God. False gods lead to false worship and a false sense of authority. But when you worship the one that owns it all, he will give you dominion over every false thing that will, will exalt itself above the Lord. Jeez. Satan has offered Jesus something that really doesn't belong to him in the first place. Right? He stole it. He stole it from Adam. And Satan knew that Jesus came to take everything back that Satan stole and bring redemption. So he's trying to offer him a sellout. He's trying to get him to settle. Okay? So there's three levels of temptation that Satan did, even with Jesus, because he was weak and because he was hungry. And I just want to share it, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but in that place was 40 days of fasting, right? What, what did he go up there for? To prepare himself for his ministry, okay? So Satan is trying to get him to settle, is trying to get him to let go uh, of the truth in that moment. He even used the, the word against him. And what does Satan use to fight back? The word of God. You have to know that you know the word of God. You have to know that you know who you are, right? Because he's going to use your own identity against you. Well, you said this, and you said that he will use your very words against you. So that's why in this particular season, we have to be so careful on what we're saying and make sure that uh, it aligns with the word of God, because yes. he will use your very own words yes. against you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time after time in the Bible, prayer brought forth wilderness or vice versa. Then fasting for 40 days, surrender, temptation, before propelling each of the mighty instruments of God into their ministry, calling and fulfilling their very purpose. God used their purpose to fulfill his promises for his children. Can God trust you to stay true to your purpose and be an instrument to fulfill his promises to his children? My God, what a weighty thing. Can I just be true to who he's called me to be and do what I'm supposed to do without looking at what, you know, Sally's doing over there and Jimmy's doing over there and trying to compare myself with them. Can I just stay focused to yeah. who he's called me to do yeah. and, and what he's called me to do? Jesus, Lord, help us. Hallelujah. This is true with Moses. David, Elijah, John, and even Jesus. If you can worship and pray in the wilderness, it will position you for the mountaintop experience. Prayer is the foundation of every ministry. I'm not talking about a spotlight or a platform, but in the Bible, when two kingdoms were battling over a territory, the winning king would cut off the head of the defeated king and take it to the high place. Okay, The high place was on the defeated territory. And he took the head there to declare victory. Okay? Um, so I say this because that's why Satan took Jesus and tempted his dominion and authority at the high place. Okay? He took him to a very high mountain, which is considered the high place. He tried to take his authority and his dominion of what God has called him to do away from him in the high place. So he could declare victory over Jesus. Yes. 
Jesus wouldn't let him go. Yeah. Jesus stayed true to his identity. Yeah. Jesus, you know, what is that called? Like, got into the grit of what he was supposed to do and was obedient in that, in that season. All right. God is looking for those who will be like John who will prepare the way of the Lord, that is willing to become comfortable being set apart, being clothed in camel's hair, someone to pray and cry out, to declare and decree repentance and freedom. God is, is, is not asking for us to create our own spotlight or platform for ourselves, but speak on his behalf without first being in the wilderness. We cannot expect... We cannot expect to be in a place of spotlight and platform without going through the wilderness. Amen. 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 If you decide to do that on your own, it will not stand. Mm -hmm. It will not stand. That's not me. That's the principles of God. If you try to do something to make yourself famous and, and you're yes. declaring to make God famous and you, are not, you have not gone through the wilderness place, it will fall. It's, what is that? The, the house that is built on sinking sand versus on a rock, right? God wants you to be a mouthpiece, a mouthpiece for him. Amen. But it's got to come out of the wilderness. you got to first be a mouthpiece in the wilderness before you can be it out on a platform. This is the year of mighty decree. History belongs to the intercessors. I believe God is saying to you, if you'll be faithful in carrying the weight of one that cries out, yes. we can declare and decree a thing and see it manifested immediately. During the quarantine, people and nations began to pray like they've never prayed before. And even though we are phasing out of the stay-at-home order, let us not neglect our wilderness experience. But be more intentional about going there on purpose. Not because we're fearful, right? Not because God had to wipe out our calendars. Because God deserves our best, not our leftovers. If any of you have said, heard what I've said, and it speaks to you, I want you to, and you want to be a mouthpiece, for the Lord, I want you to seriously consider in your mind, how will I begin to consecrate myself in the wilderness place? How will I begin to develop my wilderness experience? Going and praying for five minutes, although I'm all promoting praying for five minutes, is not going to take you to that deep place that God needs us to be in this very season. What we experience with COVID-19 it's just the beginning of what is yet to come. Right. That just gave us a taste. Yeah. If you saw the people panicking in the stores like I did, oh, you need the peace of God. And the only way you can get it is in the wilderness. On, okay? Please. So I'm just saying, if, if, you, if you want to come to that place, I want to pray for everybody. Amen? Um, and if you feel that nothing I have said has spoken to you, I want to share something that God revealed to me late at night. Um, it wasn't a meme. It wasn't a conspiracy post on Facebook. Um, this was 100% completely God. Because sometimes when I put these words together, the wilderness, the year, what God is saying, I'm like, this is just lining up and it sounds so crazy. But then... God wanted to reveal his truth and his nature. The mountain where Jesus was tempted by Satan is known as the Mount of Temptation. But it's actually identified as Mount Korintania. Korintania, that's how you say it. In Arabic. And Korintrel in Greek. Korintania derives from the Latin word Korintina which is 40. What have we been in? A quarantine. And I saw the word quarantina and my eyes like, are you kidding me right now? 
when I looked at the calendar for Indiana specifically, the amount of days that we were in a lockdown quarantine was approximately 40 days. 40 days. So I leave it up to you. This is not me just looking for a whole bunch of mysterious stuff trying to link it together. This is completely God. He's saying, I'm bringing you to the wilderness. I've given you 40 days. I've consecrated you. I'm asking you to be a mouthpiece for me. I'm asking for you not to go back to normal. I'm asking for you to, to do things a new way. Do them my way. I, I miss coming together with you guys. I miss following my little calendar. I miss all the fun stuff. But I don't want to come back into the season and incorporate all that stuff again and miss what I've obtained in the quarantine. In the quarantine. We've prayed like we've never prayed together. Right? We've been in our word like we've never been in our word. But there's still people who are lost, and there's still people who are scared, and there's still people who are getting the virus. And they need to know about Jesus. So it doesn't stop here. Praise God for what he's done for us in this season. Praise God for his protection. But we need to take it further, right? When was the last time you asked somebody, do you know Jesus? Sometimes I know I'm finishing up and then I feel like I'm getting into a lecture mode. But I remember people sending me prayer requests and I'm like, do they know Jesus? I'll pray for them, but do they know Jesus? Because if I pray for them to be healed and they don't know Jesus, what's the point? They have to know Jesus. We gotta come to a place where we're going back to do you know Jesus? It's, it's just so simple. I'll pray for you. I'll pray with you right now. But do you know Jesus? Because he's the only answer. He's the only way. Yes, he is. We have to press in. We have to press into the wilderness. Seek and find the hidden things in the secret place. Every hand is lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I pray, oh, God, that you would stir up the hearts of the people, not only in this place, oh, God, but watching live, Father God. I pray right now that you would stir up the hearts of your people, oh, Lord, God. That you would give us a passion, oh God, for what you're doing in this day, in this hour, in this season, Father God. And that we would dig our heels in. That we would dig our knees in, Father God. That we would take the position that you have called us to take, oh Lord God. That we would be set apart, Lord God. Set apart for your purpose. Set apart for your glory, Father God that we would be comfortable with the uncomfortable, Father God. I have no idea why the Lord is showing me this. But he's showing me a beach with waves. And the sand is wet and it's heavy. And yet, I see the sand moving, and it's like a turtle coming out of the sand. Those little turtles that hatch and come out of the sand, and they all run to the shore. They all run to the shore. I feel like somebody has been weighted down. Maybe sand has been thrown at you. The heaviness of life has weighed you down. It hasn't prevented you from doing what God has called you to do. It's developed you.
it's developed you, it's grown you, and I feel like now you're ready. Now you're ready to hatch. Now you're ready to launch and begin doing what God has called you to do. And like those little turtles, they were just running to the shore. They were running to do what God has called them to do. I pray right now that we would all have that happen in this season, Father God, where we've been reserved, where we've been hesitant, where we have not felt comfortable, Father God. I pray that you would help us, Lord God, to, to let go of that, oh Father God. Let go of our feelings. Let go of our flesh, oh Father God. And be bold and courageous, Father God, for you, Lord God. I pray that we would spend hours in prayer, oh Father God. That we would come up with um, not a schedule, Lord God, but that we would just be so sensitive to your spirit that if we're doing dishes and you call on us to pray, that we would pray, oh God. That when we're at work, oh God, when we're uh, got our hands to the plow, oh Father God, that if you call us to stop and do something else, that we would hear you clearly, oh Father God. I pray, oh God, that you touch our every single sense that we have, our five senses, our natural senses, Father God. And I pray, oh God, that you will connect them and link them and align them in with the Spirit of God, oh Father God. I pray right now that we would speak the language of heaven on earth, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. I feel faith arising. I feel faith stirring up, oh God, in somebody right now. You were in ministry and you've kind of settled things down. Maybe you haven't been active. Oh, but now you want to move forward. You want to do, you want to go back to that place where God was using you with a fiery passion, oh Father God. I pray right now that you would not look around at your surroundings, but that you would look in at what the Holy Spirit is saying, oh God, and that a spirit of boldness will launch out and you would just dive in, that you would be carefree and trust God to do it again. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he will be faithful to carry you and to use you as a mighty vessel and instrument for him, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, I just bless every hand that is raised, every heart that is lifted, oh, Father God, to you. And I pray, oh, God, a holy boldness, oh, God. I pray, oh, God, that you purify them, that you refine them in this season, oh, Father God, that they may shine bright for you, oh, Lord God, that they will fan the fl flames, oh, God, of revival, oh, God, not just in northwest Indiana, oh, God, not just this region, oh, God, but in all of the nations, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you have called us, oh God, to be a mighty church for you and a mighty church we will be, oh Father God. In the name Hallelujah. of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we just thank you. We just thank you right now. We just thank you right now. If there's anybody in this place that doesn't know the Lord, oh, I just ask that you would raise your hand. He wants to receive you into his family. If you're watching online and you don't know Jesus, but you want to know him, I ask that you would contact us, that you would send us a message so that we could pray for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, if you've walked away from the calling of the Lord, if you walked away and have turned your head away from him, I pray right now that if you want to come back into right standing with him, that you would just raise your hand right now in the name of Jesus. And if you're raising your hand online, again, do that so that we can pray for you. Father God, we just lift up every heart that has fallen away from you, oh God. Every heart that wants to know you, Father God. And we pray, oh God, that they will accept you as their Lord and Savior, oh God. That every heart will be surrendered, oh Lord God to the creator, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. If you don't have a church, I pray that you connect to a Bible-believing church now, here or in your region. Father God, I just pray, Lord God, for a fresh, a new start, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. This is your second chance. In fact, this might be your third or fourth or fifth chance. But you know what? You don't need to continue to have chances. You can do this. You don't have to do it alone. You have brothers and sisters that will walk with you and keep you accountable. And you'll be stronger than you ever were before, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Jesus. God, I see that there have been many, there have been many that have been hurt by the church. They haven't been hurt by God, but they've been hurt by the people in the church. He's sorry that you're hurt. But he sent his son who came, who was perfect, to cover their actions so that you might be healed. He's saying, if you come home, if you come home to him, you'll never, you'll never see it the same. You'll never look at the church the same. He will begin to give you his vision. You will begin to see the church the way he sees the church. And you will walk in healing. And you will walk in wholeness. And you will be able to even love those that have hurt you. Those that have manipulated you. Some are children of people that served in ministry. They heard their parents speaking about the church. One way. And acting another way. And you didn't know what to make of the church because of the way your parents were speaking of the church. But God wants you to know he loves you. And he loves his church. And he will not forsake you and he will not forsake his church. Amen. But he wants to use you along with his church. Amen. So come home. Come home. In Jesus' name.